High temperature heat is used for almost everything we make, from pencils to pipelines, turbines to textiles. So it's no surprise really that industrial processes consume more energy than any other sector. Industrial heat pumps could help solve this problem if they can reach next level temperatures. There are two fascinating examples in the works, one using piston compression and the other turbo machinery inspired by SpaceX rocket engines. So let's see how they work. I'm Ryan Innes and this is a Xeroth Deep Dive. I respect your time, so let's get straight to the inspiration for this, how it works, any limitations, and how it's getting on in the real world. It's wild how industrial processes use tons of energy to create heat, but then a lot of that energy often gets wasted as leftover heat that's released into the atmosphere. That isn't to say that it's always wasted. Using waste heat is a huge sector, but as the waste heat gets to lower and lower temperatures, it becomes harder to economically reuse. This is why low-grade heat, which is below 100 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit, is the most underutilized. So what if we could boost this back up to more usable levels using heat pumps? But will heat pumps ever deliver high enough temperatures? As far as manufacturing goes, the temperatures we're talking about here are pretty low. It's going to be a long time until heat pumps can get to the thousands of degrees needed for things like steel and ceramics, if ever. Instead, efforts focus on the low hundreds, around 2 to 300 degrees Celsius, suitable for industries like textiles, paper, pharmaceuticals, and food. That's exactly where these next-gen heat pumps from this video are aimed, low temperature industrial heat. It is worth noting here that although the heat source will likely be waste heat, it could also be ambient air, though it would be less efficient. One system I want to focus on is from Californian startup Carmen Industries. It claims that its compact Thermal O1 will reduce energy costs by 25 to 50 percent and achieve theoretical temperatures of 300 degrees Celsius or around 550 Fahrenheit. What makes this small system so mighty is rocket science, literally. High speed turbo machinery inspired by SpaceX's Raptor engines can compress the refrigerants in the heat pump much more efficiently at the required temperatures and pressures. Also, electric motor technology from modern EVs are able to spin these compressors at the required speeds, so also play a critical role. As Carmen Industries is still a young startup, I wanted to ground this video in some real world data from the Heat Booster from Heaton, who are a German company making high temperature heat pumps. It looks a bit like a giant jetpack, but can reach temperatures up to an impressive 200 degrees Celsius. According to the company, their system can reduce energy use by 50 to 80%. The fundamentals of both systems are relatively similar to the heat pumps people have in their homes all over the world and rely on the principles of compression and expansion. If you absorb more thermal energy than you've used in electricity for the compressor and other systems, you have a coefficient of performance over 1, which is often described as having an efficiency over 100%. The compression step uses the vast majority of the electricity used to power a heat pump, and is a key focus of innovation for high temperature heat pumps. In the heart of Kármán's Thermal O1 is a high speed compressor. According to co-founder David Terse, this means it needs just one or two compression stages compared to the multiple required by competing systems. He says it's akin to the SpaceX Raptor engine in terms of speed, pressure and temperature. I would say this sounds a bit like a metaphor here as I think the Raptor engine deals with much more extreme conditions than a heat pump. It's interesting that Carmen Industries are aiming for one or two compression stages, as from what I've read, it seems that having more compression stages in a multi-stage compressor is generally more efficient because it allows you to do small compression steps rather than one large, inefficient jump because there's such a high difference between inlet and outlet pressure. If you were to look inside the engine of a SpaceX rocket, you would see a centrifugal turbo pump, which is what inspired Carmen Industries heat pump. The centrifugal turbo pump works by using a spinning impeller to move liquid propellants like fuel or oxidizers. As the impeller spins, it flings the liquid outwards using centrifugal force, increasing its velocity and pressure before flowing through a diffuser. 
This pressurized liquid is then sent to the rocket engine's combustion chamber where it can create the propulsion. It's not clear exactly how much of the Kármán heat pump's compressor design is directly taken from the SpaceX rocket engine, as it would be powered from an electric motor instead of a turbine that uses exhaust gases from a combustion. It may also be working as a compressor instead of a pump, meaning that it would be compressing a gas instead of a liquid, like it does in the SpaceX rocket. But that all depends on the refrigerant and thermodynamic cycle they're using. However, it will definitely take a large amount of inspiration from SpaceX's design to ensure it works as efficiently as possible, using state-of-the-art impeller designs and advanced thermal management techniques. Now, before comparing this to the heat booster system and seeing the real world practicality, I have a quick message from today's sponsor, Odoo, who can help improve your new or existing business's efficiency. There is nothing worse than juggling a million different software packages for a business or project as it just gets in the way of getting the real work done. Thankfully, Odoo is an all-in-one business management platform that takes out the headache and brings everything into one place. I'll show you how simple it is to build a website, but Odoo can do so much more, like invoicing, CRM, accounting, project management, and everything in between. The website app allows me to quickly build a website in minutes by defining the type of site, the industry, and my goals. Then I can choose a color palette or insert my own logo, and then select which pages and features I need, and finally pick the best theme. I can then customize the site using an intuitive interface that lets me design it by simply dragging and dropping blocks, then rearranging them using the grid system. I can even change the text, colors, or add pictures. Then if I'm out of inspiration, they even have AI integrated in to help me generate text. Odoo provides apps tailored to all industries, whether you're a small or large business, or have a project or ongoing activity. I can personally recommend Odoo because I'm starting to use it now for another business I'm launching. Try it out now as the first app is free for life, including unlimited hosting and support using my link in the description or by scanning the on-screen QR code. Now back to the heat pumps. Compared to the Thermal 01, the heart of the Heaton's heat booster is a little different. It uses a reciprocating compressor, or piston, which is technology usually found in engines of heavy-duty industrial machines. Similar to the turbo-style compressor from Kármán, it can handle high pressure increases, which is unlike the screw compressors, which are often used in domestic heat pumps. The heat booster can be used to achieve temperature lifts as much as 140 degrees Kelvin, outputting either water or steam at temperatures up to 200 degrees Celsius. This is definitely useful and impressive, but lower than Kármán's goal of 300 degrees Celsius, which is made more impressive by its small size, which they say will make it fit into a small shipping container. As Kármán puts it, it's 300 degrees in a box. Kármán's turbo machinery deploys ultra-high-speed impellers that are quoted to spin at over 50,000 RPM. The components in the compressor are said to be made from materials like nickel-based super alloys and silicon nitride ceramics that can maintain structural integrity at temperatures well beyond 800 degrees Celsius. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think that the turbo compressors they'll be using are centrifugal compressors, as these are the ones used in SpaceX's Raptor rocket engines, and they allow you to have a larger pressure ratio, which means the pressure from the inlet can be much lower than the pressure on the outlet. Beyond the compressor and materials, the huge elephant in the room is the refrigerants used. This is the fluid that transfers the heat and is expanded and compressed. The choice of refrigerant is important for efficiency and durability, but also dictates the thermodynamic cycle used. Heaton's heat booster uses custom hydrocarbons and hydrofluorophins. Well, you, you can see why chemists have so many acronyms. However, these fluids appear to be operating near the upper limits of their thermal stability, as many common ones begin to degrade or lose efficiency at temperatures that are approaching 200 degrees Celsius. Therefore, the Thermal One from SpaceX-inspired Kármán Industries might be using something else to reach 300 degrees, meaning they also might not be using the standard vapor compression cycle either. 
This is a little bit speculative as I can't find any specific information about their thermodynamic cycle, but Andy from the Xeroth Peer Review Discord channel, which you should definitely join down below, mentioned that it could be the reverse Brayton cycle. This is definitely a possibility as it could use an inert gas that stays as a gas throughout the whole cycle without changing between liquid and gas, and this inert gas may be able to withstand really high temperatures that is needed for this application. However, I think if a suitable refrigerant is created or found, they could also use the vapour compression cycle. I think this as the currently available lower speed and lower temperature turbo compressor systems used in HVAC systems today do use it, but I don't know how realistic this is given its constraints. All this technology has been used before, just not at these speeds, pressures and temperatures inside heat pumps. I expect some challenges for the Carmen Industries heat pump will come from ensuring the system works well in a wide range of industrial applications while still mass manufacturing the heat pump. Another challenge for both Carmen and Heaton systems is achieving high enough coefficients of performance or efficiency values as they try to raise the temperatures higher and higher. The datasheet from Heaton gives a clear example of this where a small temperature lift allows a coefficient of performance of 5.4, often referred to as a 540% efficiency. However, at larger temperature rises, similar to those required by Kármán, their coefficient of performance drops to just 1.9. Still impressive, but it shows the trend that pushing for higher temperature lifts causes efficiency to drop considerably. Kármán are advertising coefficient of performance values of 3 to 7, which would be exceptionally high for such high temperature rises if they can deliver on it. It's early days for Carmen Industries, and they say a pilot is expected in 2026. They've received millions in VC funding, and they say they're going to use it to expand operations and accelerate its development. But we'll have to wait and see on that one. Heaton is further along the journey to reality, and the real-world data they provide shows that. I haven't been able to find specific consumer projects, which is kind of understandable as future collaborations can be highly confidential. They do list some forthcoming installations, however, including a rice drying plant in Belgium, which I didn't know, but actually rice is used in many different food supplies, like making pizzas crispy and puddings creamy. Interesting stuff. Heaton has recently been acquired by private equity, so like with Carmen, there's a lot of financial support. So it's up to the technology and the engineers behind it to prove its viability. There's an interesting observation from the IEA that more than a half of heavy duty emission reductions in the net zero scenario come from technologies that have been proven to work but are not yet market ready. They call this emissions inertia. Like the Thermal One, many great new ideas are still at prototype or pilot stages and not nearly ready for mass adoption. And on the business side, heavy industry facilities are capital intensive and the machinery is built to last a very long time. Plus, trade in heavy industry products is highly competitive and margins are too slim to easily absorb increased outlay of new tech. So the big question, as with many great innovations, is whether Heaton's innovative use of pistons and Carmen's use of rocket and EV tech will develop into real world applications and get installed at the millions of factories worldwide. The need to decarbonize is obvious, and when it also saves money, that's an extremely sweet spot. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It's free and helps the channel a lot. Also, I hope you don't mind the van backdrop. I'm currently living off grid with my girlfriend for two months as we're traveling a bit around the US. There's solar panels on the top, which means this whole video has been powered through solar energy, which seems quite fitting. And if you want to watch any of the other videos on the channel, check out this one on a new micro geothermal boring drill that can potentially help reduce the costs of geothermal for everyone. And as always, thanks for watching.